Okay. Okay. So let's start today. In the last few classes, we have been looking at uh, the fully differential op-amp. So today, I'll just give a quick recap of uh, what we saw in the last class. See, we started with this fully differential op-amp. So in this fully differential op amp, what is missing? I mean, uh, yeah, basically, I mean, even from the beginning of the course, I have been saying that the operating point drain voltage, how should it get set? What sets it? I mean, if you have to find the operating point drain voltage, what sets the operating point drain voltage? In the beginning, since. Huh? No, no, I mean, see, okay, if you recollect it, I have been saying that the drain voltage is always set by some source to get voltage or some other mechanism and that mechanism is what we have been looking at in the last 2-3 classes which is the common mode feedback. I mean, if in the single inner op amp, we fix this drain voltage by doing this diode connection. So here this was getting fixed by this gate to source voltage. But in the fully differential case, we have uh, the common mode feedback where I am sure you know the principle, you sense the common mode of the output, compare it with some reference and go and tweak one of the current sources, right. And I mean the other way, I mean uh, in the single ended output op amp, was this a problem? Why was it not a problem? Let's say I have a single ended op amp. For example, I will take the two stage Miller OTA that you guys already designed in the project. So, okay, first stage is basically you have the 5 transistor OTA. I will not draw that for simplicity. So, here also you have this drain voltage. What is setting the operating point drain voltage here? We will have a final DC negative feedback around the op amp. I mean, I will not show the signs. So we will have some kind of a global negative feedback at DC around the op amp and that is what will set this voltage. You will apply some DC here and that will set it here. But in the case of a fully differential OTA, even if I were to form an inverting amplifier and put the OTA in a negative feedback, So here again I have a DC negative feedback around the OTA but that just says that if my input difference is something, the difference in the output is, if, if this is R1 and R2, what can you say about the output difference in terms of the input? Minus R2 by R1 times Vi. Similarly if I call these two voltages Vx and Vy, it just says that the difference 0. So it just says, I mean this negative feedback is only saying about the difference voltages at all these points. But with that I can't say what this individual voltages are. And for that along with the difference I will also have to have a negative feedback for the common mode signals. And that's where the common mode feedback comes in. In the uh, last class we uh, looked at a two stage Miller OTA fully differential version. So we'll quickly draw that. So this is the first stage, and then we have the second stage here. So to compensate it, we use Miller compensation. So around the second stage, I go ahead and put the capacitor and the zero cancelling resistor. Okay. So if I were to draw the differential mode half circuit here, I have first stage PMOS and MOS like this and the second stage is another common source amplifier like this. So here is the input, here is the output. So at a block level I will have basically this. So this is, everything is an inverting GM, so minus GM1, 
I have minus gm2 and the intrinsic conductance and capacitance say g1 c1 and g2 c2 and around this we have the this guy right here also I missed to write it so here can you quickly tell me the pole locations can give an approximate locations for the first pole what is it This let us say this is CC or G. CC times GM2 by G2. What about the second pole? Just approximate locations. GM2 by C2. That's all. Here C2. Okay. And we also have a third pole due to the zero cancelling resistor. And what should the value of this RZ be equal to? GM2. And what was this approximately at? Yeah, it is GM2. Again, this resistor it sees all these three capacitors in series, roughly speaking. So you have uh, all of them. And what is omega u approximately here? C C. I mean, this is assuming beta is one. Now, if you were to compare it with uh, the single stage, not single stage, the single-ended output Miller op amp. See in the single ended case we didn't have this guy and what was the other change? Yeah, not base gate right? Yeah, we had this diode connection. So now here in this case uh, along with these poles did we also have some other poles? Definitely these are the poles but along with this did we also have some other poles? Yeah, yeah, we also have this non dominant pole, but besides these, I mean, here, what are the poles I have considered? I have considered the pole due to this node and this node. Is there some other node that I have not considered? I mean, look at the circuit here. I have taken the capacitors at these two nodes. Is there some other capacitor I have not considered? Here, right? Yes, sir. So, what is the uh, here also will have a pole. What is the approximate pole location here? If I call this capacitor some C, C3 or something. It is the GM of the PMOS by C, and along with that, if you remember, we also had a zero at twice the frequency, right? So, but in this is the case with a single ended output OTA, but the moment you have this fully differential version, this doesn't come into picture, okay? So, we will not have this uh, mirror pole. That is the pole zero pair due to the current mirror. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing because we don't have additional poles and zeros. So which means the calculations wherein we didn't take into account those things, they are going to be our calculations are going to be more accurate. Okay, so this is one uh, important difference. And of course, to complete the circuit, we put the common mode feedback. I'll just show it like this quickly. So this is the common mode feedback one. So here what kind of common mode uh, director we'll use for the first stage. For the first stage common mode feedback, what kind of common mode detector I'll use? Yeah, but what is a better choice here? MOS, MOS. MOS right, because yeah, this doesn't load and also if uh, we saw that if uh, here the output swings, the swings here are going to be relatively small. So this is okay. So you can use this MOS based uh, common mode detector like this. So you can use it along with the OTA or the replica rising. I think this was variant 4 and this is variant 5. And uh, for the second stage, we will use the resistive uh, common mode detector. So we'll just show it quickly. So here I will connect say the reference as VDD by 2 and do this. And to compensate it you will also have to put the capacitor around this guy. And also I can also put the zero cancelling resistor here, right? Same thing. Okay. And uh, I will have some parasitic capacitors at this gate. So what can I do to counter that? 
you can introduce a zero like this okay and what kind of an ota this must be n mos input or a p mos input okay again see uh, the decision you make based on what is the second stage what is the second stage transistor it's an n mos right this is feeding an n mos so i have the second stage to be like this so if i uh, use a p mos input pair for the first stage ota so then you see that this voltage level is more compatible right and again uh, when you design it what is the other thing you have to ensure about these transistors they should have the same current density else you will have some systematic offset so the output common mode here will not match the reference you give it will match it with some offset okay cool so along with uh, this is the uh, two stage fully differential miller ota now uh, besides this we also looked at the feed forward compensation okay i think i already copied that so in the feed forward compensation first let's uh, refresh it at a block level so at a block level we'll have this we have uh, one gm and then we have the second stage gm fully differential to compensate this what should i do i should have a fast path around this so i'll uh, go and put this and here again i need to make sure that the zero must be in the left half plane or right half plane here left half plane so what should uh, how should i ensure that i mean how can i ensure that the sign in these two parts should be same so bottom part is non inverting or inverting the way i have drawn it right because this increases it's negative here drops and this will again increase so it's non inverting so at the top side also you make sure it's non inverting so if this is plus this should be plus okay and we saw the simplest thing to do was to put some uh, transistors here as the third feed forward gm so again let's quickly make sure you understand the signs so i call uh, these as the voltages here vo1m let's say this is vo1p this is vop and vom so uh, this is this transistor is connected to vom so what should the gate be connected to v okay on one or two this is v2 and this is v1 yeah what should this gate be connected to again uh, the idea is the path from here to the output as well as from here to the output they should have similar signs so if i increase v2 the drain voltage here what will happen that will drop so which means vom will increase so i should connect something here that also make sure this increases so if i connect v2 here v2 is increasing so which means the output will decrease so in a fully differential case if v2 increases v1 decreases so i'll have to go and connect uh, v1 here and v2 here so this is the simplest implementation we can have but what was the issue with this the common mode rejection was poor so i would like to highlight that once again oops see if i have uh, this kind of a configuration okay so here let's say uh, the tail current the tail current source is biased at some current i not and i apply only the uh, bias voltages at the gates here what can you say about these currents total currents i not by 2 i not by 2 i mean identical transistors same gate voltage currents will split equally 
so now let us say i give some uh, delta vi and minus delta vi here then what can you say about this voltage incrementally incrementally it is at zero so what can you say about the incremental current in this transistor some gm times delta i so i call it some plus delta i and in the this transistor what is the current minus of this minus delta i so the total currents in the transistors are i0 by 2 plus delta i and i0 by 2 minus delta i so the total current still sums up to i0 okay of course this you can uh, trivially find out by looking at the uh, differential mode half circuit so i apply delta vi here the incremental current is gm delta vi so this is the case when we have differential mode so let us say let us say i have common mode excitation so again if i apply only the bias voltages here if this is carrying a current i not the current splits equally in the quiescent uh, in the operating point i not by 2 i not by 2 so if let us say apply a common mode jump delta vc then what can you say about the uh, change in the currents i mean there are multiple ways in which you can understand this see i know that both these transistors have the same gate voltage source voltage is same so what can you say about the currents huh same current should be same okay and the total current must be equal to i not so which means the only possible way is the current should be i not by 2 i not by 2 okay and even otherwise i know that if uh, i mean if you don't know anything also i am saying that my gate voltage is increasing here so the expectation is the so current should increase in both arms but again the total sum is i not delta i zero okay i mean if you draw the common mode half circuit this becomes even more apparent so let me quickly draw that and let's say here i have an ideal current source for simplicity this is the common mode half circuit so if i draw the incremental picture this is incrementally ground and the current source is basically open so even if i apply a delta vc incrementally what is the incremental current zero is open circuit so then what can you say about the incremental output voltage that will also be zero okay so here uh, if i apply delta vc what can you say about this voltage what is the incremental current incremental current is zero that is only possible when when vds is zero so it means this also must go to delta vc i mean that's how the current is made zero okay so uh, if you have the gm here bias with a constant current the common mode response is basically zero as long as its current source is ideal so in this case you see that even uh, i mean if i change let me erase the arrows here if i increase the inputs here what can we say about the these voltages no no common mode i am increasing both v1 and v2 it's a common mode change small step what can you say about these voltages it will not change we just saw right there is no i mean if i make a common mode change in the input the incremental current is zero so there is going to be no incremental change the voltage is going to be constant like this but here i am increasing these two voltages same input so then what can you say about this voltage I mean here the current in this transistor is not fixed isn't it so if i change if i apply some delta vc here this will take in gm delta vc because the source voltage is incrementally ground so same thing here if i apply some delta vc change this will also draw gm delta vc so we are pulling out current from that node so uh, 
what what can you say about the incremental voltage they pull out current so this is gm delta vc so these two voltage now decrease okay so the moment you add these two transistors you see that if there is any common mode change in the input my output is responding so what did we do to uh, counter this what can be done to counter this so these two gms must not be acting independently like we have they should be biased with a constant current i mean in fact see uh, the way we have drawn it here this is what i have drawn for the uh, feed forward op amp that is uh, this gm here is a fully differential gm but the way i have implemented it it's like i have two separate gms pumping in currents without any common mode rejection so this is not what i actually implemented in fact i have implemented two separate gms in a pseudo differential fashion so the uh, fix is to oops yeah fix is to ha have a common mode rejection for that so i'll copy that quickly maybe this is the first stage and the second stage i'll draw separately here v1p and v1m the feed forward stage i don't want it to operate uh, separately i want it to operate with a constant bias current like this so we want to and we saw the simplest design choice you can have is to make sure that these two currents are same bias currents so i have uh, the current bias set bias current set by this tail transistor so i can simply go ahead and uh, connect this when we saw in detail in the last class i'll just quickly do it now right and here again the last thing that is missing is the common mode feedback so i'll have to have uh, and at the output i'll have resistive common mode feedback See, this is some V ref. I'll now be redraw this guy like this. Okay. So this will complete the picture. So uh, here again, if I look at the common mode half circuit of this guy, we have a two-stage OTA. So we'll have to do compensation. So to understand it, let me first quickly draw the common mode half circuit so that it's more apparent. So I'm drawing the common mode half circuit. So I'll erase this part. So everything comes in parallel, like this. So uh, this is the first stage. This is the second stage. So I'll break the loop here. So looks like I'm applying the input here, and the first stage gives the output here, feeds it to the second stage, and this is the output of the second stage. so to compensate this i need go and put a miller capacitor between the input and the output of the second stage so the capacitor must basically come here right so which means here i will have to put the capacitor between this node and this node as well as from this node to this node right so i'll just quickly make one minor change the single transistor here i'll split it as two transistors just for cosmetic reasons and then then i can uh, nicely not the composition now of course along with this you can also add the zero cancelling resistor and all the stuff of course you will auto will also have to have these capacitors here so that effect of this gate capacitance is not causing anything and uh, as pointed out there is one common variant that is usually done which is now if i look at the first stage this is the first stage gm okay so this is the second stage gm this is the feed forward gm now uh, the first stage first gm has a common mode rejection the uh, third stage gm 
that's also biased with a constant current so that also has common motor rejection so you can as well put a tail source for the second stage of the gm so you can go ahead and put a current source here so this is my gm so this way even the second stage is going to have some common motor rejection so this is the two stage feed forward OTA is that okay cool so uh, I'll want to uh, elaborate on the uh, thing that I covered in the last 10 minutes of last class so say we have a pseudo differential implementation So this is a pseudo differential amplifier. So what is the difference between a pseudo differential and a fully differential amplifier? Hmm? Sorry? Yeah, I mean that's okay. But uh, in terms of functionality, what is the difference? Common mode rejection is poor, right? Because see, in this case, uh, irrespective of whether I apply a common mode signal or a differential mode signal, the equivalent half circuit is identical. So the small signal gain for both common mode and differential mode signals is going to be same, but that's not what you want. Okay, but let us say now I go and put a common mode feedback around this guy. So I have this and say put a OTA here, connect it to some reference voltage, and do this. So let's see what will happen if I apply some step, common mode step here. And since I am interested in uh, the common mode response, I will draw the common mode half circuit. So we have the PMOS here. Okay, I think I flip it and draw. PMOS and the NMOS. And uh, the output I have this resistor connected to the OTA. Is that okay? So now let us say uh, initially I applied only a bias voltage here. When I applied the bias voltage, what can you say about these two voltages? In steady state, what do you think uh, these voltages will settle to? It will be it will settle to VREF because this OTA is trying to enforce the common mode here to VREF. I mean, I assume that this has infinite gain for now, so this these two voltages will be sorry. These two voltages will be identical exactly if it has infinite gain. So before I do anything, when I only have the bias voltages applied, my output is at VREF. Okay. So this is my common mode uh, half circuit. So here I'll draw the incremental equivalent. So uh, drain is sorry, the VDD is grounded. So what will happen to VREF? That's also incrementally grounded because it's a constant voltage. And here I have the delta VC. Let's say it's a jump, step jump. And this is where say I'm applying the step. So now in steady state, again, I assume that this has infinite gain. In steady state, what do you think will be the incremental change in this voltage? Hmm? Why? Which is grounded? Ah, VREF is grounded. See again, the idea is same. This has infinite gain. It will ensure these two guys to be same because we have it in negative feedback. So incrementally this is short, so this will also be having zero incremental change. So in steady state it is obvious that this will also be zero, so it will come back to VREF. So let's quickly see what happens at uh, in the initial stages. So now again if this op amp or the OTA has infinite speed, it will not allow any change. But we know that's not the case clearly because we'll have capacitors from uh, say the output node to ground 
from this node to ground and we'll also have poles and zeros inside this guy. So now let us say this is uh, t equal to 0, the instant at which I apply the step. At t equal to 0 plus, what can you say about the capacitors? They act like a short circuit because they don't uh, allow changes in voltage. So uh, this is basically ground. So my output still is at VRF, doesn't change. And this is also short. Okay. So that short, I'll uh, write it separately like this. Okay. Now after t equal to 0 plus, this OTA, I mean, remember this is not infinitely fast. This will take some finite time to respond. So even after t equal to 0 plus for a short period of time, this voltage will not change. So I can still consider that to be an incremental short. Is that okay? So if that is the case, what is the output impedance looking here? Total Z out. What is that? We have the two transistors R0, so I will call it some effective R0 and then? I mean, this is an ideal OTA for now, okay. Assume that this is an ideal OTA, so there is nothing here. That will simplify our things. So I mean, we have these two guys, but what is the other thing we have? We also have the capacitor, this guy. So this comes in parallel, one by some SCL, let's say, this is some CL, okay. And now I am applying a uh, step of delta Vc at the input. What can you say about the incremental current? No, what is the value? So some delta Ic, let us say, delta Ic is gm of the nmos times delta Vc. So after, t I mean, this current is always gm delta Vc, right? And for all time instants, after you apply this step, the current is gm delta Vc, okay? So now uh, we saw after t equal to 0 plus for a short while this is incrementally ground. So this is the output resistance. So we are pulling out a current delta IC from this output resistance. So what can you say about the voltage? It will basically start to drop. Right? I mean we have this effective output impedance which is basically a resistor and a capacitor in parallel. And looks like I am pulling out a current of this. So it's a first order RC circuit again, so you guys should be familiar. So let's say the output does this. Now after let's say this time, the OTA starts to respond. So this will start to change this voltage. So I can no longer consider this to be incrementally short. So I'm having this connection now. So this voltage will increase and the OTA will try to bring it to the final voltage back to V. So we might have let's say something like this or if the uh, loop is slower it might even take longer time to set. Is that okay? You know that in steady state because of the fact that the OT has infinite gain even if there is a change at the common mode the output common mode does not change. But because of the delay in the loop here this does not happen instantly it will take some time that is all. And uh, in steady state, what can you say about, let me remove this guy. In steady state, can you comment on the current in the PMOS, incremental current? Okay, you are saying this current is 0, right? What is this current? I mean, if I apply delta VC at the gate, GM times delta IC. So you are saying there is no incremental current in the PMOS. So which means the current is effective current is getting pulled out of that node. So voltage should keep dropping, right? And but I know that for a fact the voltage doesn't change. It settles back to VRF. So then what can you say? Well, it, it cannot be zero obviously. What value should it be? This voltage doesn't change. In steady state, this voltage has zero incremental change. Is that point clear? If that is the case, what can you say about these two currents? Equal. They have to be equal. If they are not equal, it will either increase or decrease. So this is also equal to my delta IP. 
if that is the case what can you say about this voltage delta vg say the output of the ota which is connected to the gate of the pmos has an increment delta vg what can you say about delta vg why is it delta vc i mean think carefully i mean i am saying that this current is delta ip so what should be the corresponding increment in the gate voltage i mean the current in the N pmos is delta ip of the gm of the pmos but i mean remember uh, it should be minus actually okay because gm times vgs i mean gm times delta v is the current flowing from drain to source but here i have defined the current the other way so just be careful with these signs so this is basically uh, minus gm of the nmos by gm of the pmos times delta vc okay see uh, this is the uh, important thing see uh, in let us say you don't have this common mode feedback right so this was basically connected to some fixed voltage this gate so incrementally it is always short now if i apply some delta vc there is no incremental current here so all the current will kind of flow out of this node and the output will keep dropping but the act of putting this common mode feedback loop what it basically does it changes the gate voltage here so that the incremental current in the other current source is also equal to this guy so that the output doesn't change if you remember this is how we kind of came to the common mode feedback wherein we have two current sources whose values were not equal and the loop was trying to make the values of those two current sources equal so that my output doesn't change it is set to a fixed value okay so now uh, hopefully this observation is clear that if i apply write it here maybe a common mode jump delta vc step what is the steady state change so i apply a delta vc step in the common mode incremental of delta vc what is the incremental change in my output in steady state zero so what can you say about my uh, common mode gain at dc that will also be zero okay and that's happening because this has infinite gain obviously in practice we'll have some finite gain so in that case what can you say about this guy it will be very small and similarly delta vc will be a small number that's all it won't be exactly zero but now let us say i have a case where uh, we'll have the same thing or maybe i'll draw separately but now uh, let's say i have a tail current source also we'll copy this the only change is i am adding a tail current source let's say this is ideal for now so same scenario i am applying a common mode step i'll draw the common mode half circuit so i'll erase one of the halves here i'll just have one of the resistors the ot is missing i'll draw the ot quickly this is rf that's it okay so this is the complete circuit if i draw the incremental equivalent this is short what can you say about rf rf is also short in small signal and this current source is biased at a constant current i not so in the incremental half circuit it will be open so now i'm applying a delta vc jump at the input what can you say about incremental current it will be zero okay so in this case let's say initially this was set to vrf and i apply the step input here what can you say about the common mode output here yeah it incrementally it's zero so it's going to be at vrf all the time okay so as long as i bias here with a constant tail current source even if i apply a common mode step there is not going to be any change 
Okay, but of course, in practice, uh, the current source will have some finite output resistance. Say some R not. So in that case, if I apply some delta VC, what can you say about uh, the current here? I mean, GM times VGS. So what is the source voltage here? I mean, you can find out, but I mean, the point is, it is going to be small. I mean, if R naught is infinity, it is zero. If R naught is some finite number, which is large enough, hopefully, this current is going to be so some small number. Okay, so uh, the output voltage will uh, again start to drop, but the drop is going to be really small, and the feedback loop will again switch in. So the bottom line is the act of putting a common mode feedback loop in a pseudo differential circuit ensures that my common mode gain is small in steady state. But for any for small, I mean, uh, when you apply a sudden step, sudden step. The common mode will actually uh, change quite a lot for a short span of time, and that might not be great because if this jump is large, the transistors will go out of saturation and stuff. You see that the output is swinging quite a lot, so it could take the transistors out of saturation and stuff. Whereas if you bias it with a constant current like this, the change is going to be really really small. So it is always preferable to have the common mode rejection. Obtained using this tail current source, rather than simply relying on what I get from my common mode feedback. And the other way to interpret this result is as follows. I think I discussed it in the last class also. So I think I took uh, the example of this pseudo differential circuit. I think I considered. This has the common mode feedback. So here, uh, in differential mode, this is incrementally short. So basically, I just have I'll just draw one half. This is incrementally short, incrementally short, and the output resistance is basically R naught of this guy parallel with R naught of this guy parallel with this resistor, which can be quite large. Okay. Now let us say I apply a common mode step. Or common mode uh, input in the common mode half circuit, I'll have only one of these halves, right? And what is the impedance in common mode here? This is the common mode half circuit, right? Yeah. What is the parallel combination? It will be one by GM. Okay, because you see that whatever incremental voltage is applied to the gate will come to the, I mean, applied at the drain will directly appear at the gate. So it's as though I am connecting the gate and the drain. So this is going to be one by GM, approximately. So the common mode output resistance is actually now smaller compared to the differential mode output resistance, and that's mainly because we have put a feedback loop that is active only for the common mode signals. Okay, and this is indeed a, a property of negative feedback loops. So I mean, uh, you might have known this already. So say I have a voltage source, a sloppy voltage source. By that I mean it has some series output resistance. Now you know that I can make it a better current source by using negative feedback, wherein I have the output voltage. I compare the output voltage with the input. And I ensure that my looking in input resistance is small, very large. So if that is the case, this entire input voltage is sensed by this block, and I do this comparison and get this. This is the simplest negative feedback loop, right? It's basically the voltage follower. So here I see that my output voltage is equal to V in, if this is V in, all the time. So even if I connect any uh, load here, which draws any amount of current, irrespective of my load current, the output voltage is what? I mean, independent of the load current, my output voltage is set to V in. Is that fine? 
it doesn't matter what current I am drawing from this guy. As long as this op-amp has infinite gain, it will make sure these two voltages are equal. So the output will be exactly equal to the gain. So what I am saying is irrespective of any changes in the current, my output voltage is same, doesn't change. If that is the case, what can you say about R out? What did we see? We see that even if I change the current delta i to some value, that is this guy, what is the corresponding change in the delta v out? Zero. Output voltage doesn't change. So what can you say about the output resistance? Zero. Does that make sense? Because the negative feedback loop is fixing these two voltages to be equal. So it doesn't matter what is the current I am drawing out of this. Okay, so in a way, uh, this this the negative feedback loop is making this poor voltage source into a better voltage source by reducing the output resistance, and this is in fact a better voltage control voltage source what we have. Okay, now we can do the same thing with the current also. Now say I have a poor current source, so which means, so what is the difference between a good, I mean ideal current source and a non-ideal current source? Parallel it's going to have some parallel resistance in a non-ideal current source. Okay, so it say it is some Rx. Now I will try to make it a better current source using negative feedback. So how can I do that? What is the negative feedback do first? First, huh? first it has to compare my output current, say this is my output current. I have to compare my output current with the input current, which means I will have to do a subtraction of two currents. So if I have two current sources like this, what is the simplest way in which I can subtract the two currents? Say this I1, I2. Sorry? No, if they connect in parallel, like this, this will be some of the two currents, right? You, we are partially right, but see the way I have drawn it, what is the simplest connection you can make? We are partially right, this thing carefully, you know? The way I have drawn it, what can I do? If I do this, the current flowing out of this node is going to be difference of the two currents. Mm -hmm. So adding and subtracting currents are actually quite straightforward in circuits. Okay. So let us say now I didn't have this output resistance, right? So then basically I could do this, isn't it? Okay. So in that case, this would have worked. But now I have output resistance, so which means not all of the currents will flow here, this guy will steal some of the current. Mm. So what should I put here so that all the current flows here? I should ideally put a short circuit. Short circuit. Yeah. So in practice it has to be a very small resistance, I will say it R small. If I put a really really small resistance, so when I didn't make this connection, this current is almost equal to I n. So now I connect this guy, so what will be this current now? Oops sorry, I think I made a mistake in the arrow, yeah. So I see that I am pumping in a, pumping in a current of I out here, okay, and looks like I am taking out a current I in. This guy is so this current is I out, I am stealing a current I in here, so what is the remaining current that flows here? I out minus I in, I mean I don't have to worry about this resistance here because this will now take all the current. So it's as though I didn't have this guy, is that okay? So if I have this scenario, if this current is I out, this is I in, the current flowing in is 
i out minus i in now even if i go and put this resistor doesn't make a difference because this is ideally a short circuit whatever i put so all the current will flow there is that okay so now if i call this as vi what is vi let's finish it yeah so oops yaar it's a completeness hold on if i call this vi vi is i out minus i in times that small resistance now if i out is greater than i in what can you say about vi so to correct it what should i do what should i do to the output current i should decrease my output current right simple so all i need is a block that senses some voltage here and provides a current what is a block that provides such a it's a ota so it's a gm block so i'll basically have to put a gm like this and uh, quickly tell the signs right so i see that if my input voltage increases the current has to drop so this should be minus okay so i mean the simplest transistor implementation is this let's quickly do that and end it so i have the input current i in and rx here so what is the simplest trans connector you know it's a tra simple transistor okay forget about common source anything it's yes, transistor is a voltage control current source that's all so here uh, if this is the current direction what is plus and minus which of the terminals is corresponding to the plus and minus here gate is plus source is minus because it's gm vgs right so it's plus minus and the positive is grounded incrementally and the negative thing is connected to the input source so i'll do this here and incrementally short it so this is my output current now you, you recognize the circuit it's a common gate okay and here what is the imp impedance looking here rx yeah forget about rx uh, besides rx it's 1 by gm that is small and that's what you also wanted right this to be small you have that and now what is the output resistance can you quickly tell me r out i mean it's a small signal so to find the output resistance rx first i'll remove this guy so it's basically what rx plus r0 yeah it's a cas code that you already know so what is that so rx plus r0 plus gm r0 times rx so this is going to be really large i mean earlier i had a sloppy current source with some output resistance now i put this configuration the output resistance is even higher and it's better and in steady state out in steady state ideally i want i out to be equal to i in then what can you say about vi but even if vi is zero i want i out to be non zero so how can i uh, how is it possible when will it, when will this be possible i have an input voltage of zero but i want a finite output current so when will this be possible no no r small doesn't say anything right what is the relation between the output current and the voltage gm times vi so what should i huh? gm should be infinity and here again if i make gm to be infinity r in is zero r out is what infinity so basically this negative feedback is again making this poor current source into a better current source and with respect to the current source it means the output resistance is increased so what kind of control source is this no no it's a current control current source okay it's a current buffer i mean this is basically the common gate configuration which is a current buffer so it's a current control current source so the point i'm making is the uh, the negative feedback loop make sure that my output is either a better voltage source or a better current source 
if it's a voltage source it will make the output resistance ideally to be zero if it's a current source it will make it to be infinity okay so let's uh, stop here sorry